All right then, Caden, uh, you're up next whenever you're ready. Hello, everyone. My name is Caden, and this is my take on dating in the furry community. I will be targeting long distance and online relationships, as I believe those who can interact with each other in person have a much higher success rate of long lasting and meaningful courtships. Starting off, when I think back, I've been around this community one way or another for somewhere around six plus years, and I've only ever seen one of these types of relationships work out, relating to the long distance, that is. And they ended up flying to move in together anyway, slightly muting my point of the long distance. Out of the numerous amounts of furs I've met or observed, there are similar trends with this Twitter-pated stage, as I like to call it, where everything is wonderful, you think about them all the time, talk 24-7, and everything is great. But as time goes on, there's always a lack of physical contact, time zone complications, real-life obligations, and for some, temptation. Often enough, stress becomes a thing, as not being able to see the other leaves a lot up to speculation and guesswork. Emotion is not always easily expressed over text-based communication, and feelings tend to be hidden during a voice call as to not stir up too much of a commotion or feel vulnerable. Pent-up doubt and longing is a disgusting combination for a couple already on the edge of just trying to make time for one another, leading to a downward spiral of events that can cause breaks. The numerous factors that cause breaks, the aftermath of the drama can lead into other problems. Typically, relationships have both parties with common friends or communities. If or when things end on bad terms, friends find themselves uncomfortable, forced to choose sides, or everything ends up in people completely getting removed from a large section of a community they invested in for a very long time. Sadly, I've witnessed this and been a victim of such a thing too many times to count. The biggest issue for these couples is distance. You can't take your lover out on a date, sleep next to them at night, wake up the following morning, or help them in person during a time of need. Going through each and every day knowing that you care about someone you can't reach is a subconscious feeling of, of anxiety most never notice building up like a snowballing boulder. Every time a conflict between the two happens, it gets bigger and bigger until ultimately crashing everything apart. Now, I will rein back a little bit to say not everything ends badly. For example, some people I've recently met used to date but are on friendly terms still, and I would have never noticed unless told, but I boil this down to professionalism and experience as they are older than me and have far more knowledge about their situation than I do. For a realistic point, I will take a real-life experience I've had a couple years back and share it with you guys for the first time. Person C was a female and G was a male. We all started back in an IRC-based chat room called Chatsy. I got close to C and G as friends, talking about games, events, anything under the sun, typically things one would do with good online friends. Later, I'd learned they had been secretly dating for about a month, and I was told first about it. How wonderful. I'd been let in on a secret that two of my best friends have been having a thing, and I get to watch them evolve together. Sadly, this was more of a curse than a gift. Time would go on for the next few months as I spoke to them both together, one-on-one -on -one regularly. regularly. C's dad was a fairly strict religious fellow, restricting her time and communication to us from time to time, but we always were supportive when she came back. After one of these returns from being gone for about a week, which became more frequent as time went on, C would start to vent to me more and more. Less communication to her partner G became an issue as he came to me multiple times concerned about her whereabouts while I was literally speaking with her. What do you do? Say, oh yeah, she's talking to me right now. I don't know why she's not talking. Lie, ignore him, tell C he's worried. No matter what happens, it was difficult choice after difficult choice for me. I later learned that C had become more female slash gay leaning as the year had gone on. And G had changed himself to a female Sona just to keep her attention. After she disappeared for about a month, G told me he hadn't heard anything, so I told, so I went and did some digging, finding them on Steam as we had used to play games there, and just sending them a friendly, hey, I got an immediate paragraph reply about how their father had found out about mostly everything and many other things such as antidepressants, illegal parenting strategies, as I'll put it lightly, and other sorts of drama. Keep in mind, I'm skimming over two to three years worth of events as I summarize this. When she finally spoke to G again, she broke things right then and there, revealed that she'd been dating another guy I'll call S for a couple of months now. You can imagine the sinking pit in your stomach G could feel. Ignored, cheated on, never given the respect to be, even be told it was over. He'd even changed his character's gender, but she went for another guy despite that all. This shock valley had me reserved from the furry scene itself for a while as I took a break from everything. Again, I've cut a lot of detail for the sake of time, but this three-year period observing such a thing was enough to set my mindset on the subject. I believe that dating within the community is okay, but the majority of relationships tend to be long distance, resulting in the majority of furry relationships failing from what I've seen. No matter how well off things seem at the start, I believe exclusively dating is a 1% gamble, not worth the price of losing, as its effects not only hurt you, but others around you in the majority of cases. 
go have fun, flirt, play around. But unless you have the option to take someone out on a date, I wouldn't recommend actually dating. Sorry to everyone this opinion may not apply to, but thank you for taking your time to listen to me speaking. I wish you all a happy holidays. Thank you very much for that, Caden. We have some questions for you. Simba, whenever you're ready. Hi, Caden. Thank you for your speech. So your entire argument is based on the conjecture that only relationships that last forever are best, and hence that furry only relationships are less valuable because they tend to be online only and therefore they tend not to last. I, I agree with that. But a relationship can last and benefit people for years and months, even if not forever. Don't you feel this invalidates the entire premise of your argument? I do feel that is a very fair point, and there's only so many points I can touch on as I had already gone over my time. Any relationship that both parties come out and are satisfied with the result and have gained from it, I feel is acceptable, but those are also not very common from what I've seen. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any more questions for Caden? So, uh, Monterey, whenever you're ready. Um. I'm sorry if I worded this question wrong a little bit. I just wanted to ask, uh, um, okay, I, I've i been dating a person for like two or three years. And um, from what I've heard, from what I heard, heard from you is that uh, like the communication can be hard. And I, th I agree with you, communication can be hard. But at the same time, I think if if you have the time, have the time and the effort to always communicate with this person and to make sure you you stay in contact with them, then I honestly think it could work. Well, that's not too much of a question as much of a statement, but I will try to touch on that a little bit. Um, the example I gave is something where a lack of communication became one of their biggest problems as they stopped talking to each other as much and it led into a downward spiral. If you guys can talk to each other quite often and be honest, I believe there's a much higher chance to be successful. Thank you very much. And Elt. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm to one of the later speakers for today, and I wanted to... Uh, have you reiterate a point really quick on uh, the relationship between distance and the success of dating. Uh, is there a common sentiment that the further you are from somebody you'd like to date, the higher probability there is failure in the relationship? That is a very good question, actually. I like how you phrased it. Um, I would say after a certain point of distance where it becomes unrealistic to meet one another, you hit this threshold where you can imagine you would never get to see this person. And that's the thought that really kills a lot of relationships. What, if I may step in for a moment, I think um, perhaps what's more relevant isn't the distance, but the amount of time zones between you. That's certainly what I felt. If someone's 10,000 miles away, but they're in my time zone, well, hey, I'm in sync with them. But if they're 6,000 miles away, nine hours different, mm, that's difficult. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I have a question for you. Sure. Caden, uh, do you think that exclusivity is necessary for a good relation? Ah. And do you not instead think that a lot of furries have kind of had successful polyamorous ones? I believe polyamorous relationships in this community specifically tend to have a lot higher success rate, or at least people come out a lot happier in those. And I'm not sure if it's linked to you're not as committed to one another, or if you're not feeling this always anxiety inside of you, like trying to impress this person because you have multiple people to talk to. No matter what it is, I do think polyamorous people end up happier somehow. Okay, thank you. Right then, are there any more questions for Caden? This is a last call for questions. Aha, a few are sneaking in. <laughs> After this question is finished being asked, I will I will stop taking questions for Caden. So make sure to react now if you want to. Uh, Crimson, whenever you're ready. My question is, 
what would you what would you recommend or what would you tell someone uh, in regards to long distance relationships uh, for someone who doesn't have a good dating scene around them or if there is and has to essentially travel or move to another location in order to really find in order to really uh, have a chance at uh, having a relationship. That is something that I believe probably is more case by case, but I would definitely suggest to anyone looking into something like that before ever committing to actually flying somewhere to visit or let alone moving in, spend a long time talking to this person, at least a year, maybe a few years. If you're just starting out dating with someone, you should definitely be as easily communicatable as possible. You leave yourself a little bit vulnerable when they're asking you questions, be honest, and ask them questions, get to know them, make stuff that makes them think a little bit. If you guys can keep a consistent, talking, healthy relationship together, things will be a lot better. Because if something concerns you and you don't mention it, you're always going to be worried about it. But maybe it was just a mix-up and they can clear it up right away. Thank you very much.